Welcome back everyone to part six of our VG tutorial videos. Today we're going to be covering how to make a movie out of your data set that includes a timestamp and a scale bar. So to do this, we're gonna open a sample from Fiji. We do that by going to File, Open Samples, and we're gonna go ahead and use the Mitosis stack here. So that will load, this is data that's built into Fiji already. And now we have a two channel Z stack time-lapse. Okay, so we want to, of course, make our movie pretty and then make our data pretty and then make a movie from that data. And to do that, we're gonna do a couple steps and I'm gonna list them down here as usual in this window so you can follow along. The first thing we're gonna do is apply a slight blur to the data of only about one pixel. I can zoom in on the data by selecting the magnification button, the magnifying glass, and then left clicking in the image. So I zoom in so we can see what's going on. And now I'm going to run a Gaussian blur. You can do that by clicking on the Fiji bar and typing L and typing in Gaussian blur. Or it's in process, filters, Gaussian blur. Same thing. Okay, so the radius that we're gonna use here for our data is a radius of one. Um, you can do this in scaled units, but make sure that you uh, pay attention that the scaled units are in microns. We're going to um, blur with a radius of one pixel, so a very, very slight blur. So if I click OK now, our data gets uh, blurred by one pixel, so it's smoothed just a little bit. Okay, and now we want to subtract background. And we're gonna do that using the sub Subtract Background plugin, which is under Process, Subtract Background. So for this background subtraction, we want to use a radius that's appropriate for our data. And the rule of thumb that I like to use is we want to use a radius that is just bigger than the smallest object uh, in our field of view, okay? So um, we have 171 by 196 pixels. So that sets the upper limit of what our rolling ball would be. We wouldn't want to go any bigger than that. And in fact, we want to go quite smaller than that. And we need to pay attention to the objects in our field of view. Um, and we want to make sure that the radius is bigger than the smallest object. So we're going to use 50 for our data here. We do not have a light background. We don't want to create background. And we're going to disable these other options as well. So with a radius of 50 pixels, we're going to click OK, and this will execute on our data. And so now you notice that um, the background in the data set is just completely gone. And we can adjust brightness and contrast settings by going to Image, Adjust, Brightness and Contrast, and we can see what's going on in our data set this way. If I select the second channel, I can now uh, set the settings for the green channel as well. And now we have a beautiful uh, data set. So to make a movie, it's very difficult to show all Z slices from a confocal stack in a movie. So um, one thing you need to do in most instances is pare down your data in one dimension so that you can play it in a movie. So to do that for our data set, we're going to max project over the Z dimension. So to do that, we're going to go to image, stacks, Z project, and we have some options here. Um, you notice our data set has 51 time points and five Z slices. So the start slice and stop slice are the top and bottom of the Z stack. We can choose our projection type. Um, you can do sum, max, min, whatever you like. We're gonna do max today. And we wanna make sure that we have selected all time frames so that it max projects the entire movie. Once this is all selected, click OK. And now we have a new window in which I will zoom that is max projected. So you notice we've lost a dimension here at the bottom of our stack. Our Z dimension is now gone and we can display all Z dimensions at one time in one single frame through the course of our movie. So now that we want to uh, add a scale bar and a timestamp to our movie so that people know what scale our movie is on, and they want to know uh, the time over which this movie occurs. Okay, so to do that, the first thing we need to do is adjust our brightness and contrast settings so that we can convert to an RGB format. 
because the text that we want to put onto the top of our window should be um, the color that we choose. And if we leave it in the format that it is now, the 16-bit format, it will add onto the green channel as green pixels or the red channel as red pixels, depending on what you choose. So um, let's adjust our brightness and contrast one more time. Since we've max projected now, the range should be slightly different. Okay, so now we have our movie adjusted and we're going to go to image, type, RGB color. We're going to make sure that we make an RGB of all 51 frames and we want to keep the source in case we mess up, we can always go back. So I'm gonna click okay. And now we've made a new window, I'll zoom in. And it looks exactly like our movie before, but now we've lost our channels uh, slider because everything is now in one window together as a composite. Okay, so now that we're in RGB format, we can add our scale bar and our timestamp. And these are two simple steps. We'll notice here that our image is 15 microns by 17 microns with 170 pixels by 196 pixels. This means that our data has the scale already attached to the data. Um, and a lot of the times off of microscopes, that will be the case. Uh, there are some instances where you will not have the scale and you will have to set that scale going through analyze, set scale. Okay, so now that we have the scale um, attached to our data, I'm gonna click on the Fiji bar and type L and I'm gonna look for the scale bar plugin. I'm gonna go ahead and just move this out of the way. So I'm gonna select the scale bar plugin. I'm gonna select my data set and I'm gonna click run. So this gives me a lot of options. It gives me um, the width that I want to display and some characteristics about the bar itself. So let's display a five micron bar we can change the height of the bar itself, uh, and we can change the font size of the label. So let's go down to 10 for the font size. This is where you can choose your color and the background. You can add a background um, to the scale bar if you like. Um, I'm gonna go back to none. So it just overlays the top of my data. I like the location in the lower right, um, and so we'll leave that there. Um, I do like the way the text is bold. If we unbold the text, um, it becomes a little bit smaller and I think a little bit harder to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave mine bold. Um, you can choose a serif font or you can deselect that as well. We do want to make sure that we label all slices. That's the important part. We have a movie and we wanna show the scale across the whole movie. So I'm gonna select label all slices. And the last thing is I'm gonna deselect overlay. Overlay is a way where Fiji can display things over the top of the image, but it's not actually written onto the data itself. So for other programs outside of Fiji to recognize the scale bar, we want to deselect overlay. Once we've done that, I'm gonna click OK. And now our data set, if we scroll through in time here, has that same scale bar on every frame of the entire movie. Great. So the last thing I wanna do is make sure I include the timestamp for this data set. Um, so that people know the um, time over which this process occurs. So we're gonna look for time stamper, JRUV1. And I know that from image, show info, that the time scale per frame is 0.14 seconds. So I'm gonna select my data. I'm gonna make sure that time stamper is selected. And I'm gonna click run. And so now this brings up a simple window where it says the start time should be whatever number I choose. The time between frames is whatever I need it to be. So we're gonna say 0.14 seconds. The suffix is the second for the units. And now we have to kind of play around with the XY location of the label so that it's in the proper position. So remember this is in pixels and we only have 170 pixels. So you need to make sure that you don't do 200 obviously puts it off screen. So if we do 20, that looks pretty good. The Y location looks pretty good as well. You just wanna make sure that it's out of the way and that it doesn't overlap your data as much as possible. We used a font size of 10 before, so we're gonna use 10 again. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and make this bold as well. And you can include only the suffix if you like, but we actually want the time to display during the course of the movie. 
So we're going to do all of the data, not just the suffix. So now I'll click OK. And you can see that our data now has the timestamp in the top left corner over the movie. So now we have an intact data set that has our scale bar, our timestamp, and we want to save this as a movie. I recommend saving as a TIFF um, before you save as a movie so that you have this that you can go back to and modify later if you need to add things. Um, but to save the movie, we're going to go to File, Save As, ABI. So this is the file format that Fiji has built in for movies. I'm going to do a compression of none so that we don't lose anything in our, our data set. And our frame rate, you can set to whatever you like. Empirically, I've determined movies look really good for about 30 seconds, and people sometimes stop paying attention after 30 seconds. So let's make a two frame per second movie because we have 51 frames. That gets us pretty close. So with a compression of none, and two frames per second. I'll click OK. And now I can save my movie to the desktop. And now I have a new movie that is an AVI file that when I double click, I can play in Windows. It has the timestamp intact and it also has the scale bar intact. And this will take about 25 seconds to play. OK. So that was making a movie with Fiji of your data set. Thank you very much for watching.